Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today my mission is to figure out should you read the manga for Vinland Saga. Now I am also still in awe of the amazing uh, first three episodes we got but that was my first experience of the world of Vinland Saga and what I saw was absolutely amazing and now it's finally time to dive in to the manga. Now I've come prepared, I have the first four volumes of the manga and I do believe that this is what the anime is set to cover um, so it's, this is actually eight volumes. As a kind of collector standpoint, you know, if you were to want to get into collecting manga, these are some of the nicest books on my shelf. But in terms of actual story, um, I don't know yet. I have not read it. This is past Hannah doing the introduction. I am going to read uh, each book and then at the end of each book I'm going to give you an updated kind of what my thoughts are on this series. So let's start. Let's read volume one. Okay, so I've actually just read all four books, which I didn't plan on doing, but here we are. These were fucking fantastic, alright? Like, I've been holding off for this series for the longest time, and I don't know why. Everyone is so many people's favourite series, and I always just never fancied it, never fancied Vikings, stuff like that, but holy shit, that was really good. So the idea of this video, um, you know, after watching the first three episodes of the anime and then reading the first four books of the manga. It's basically just to give my opinion on whether I think you're better off waiting for the whole anime to come out or if you're better just going and snatching those volumes and reading through it just now. But before we get into the whole uh, anime versus manga side of things, let's just quickly say what this series is about and if it's even worth consuming at all. So Vinland Saga is set in 11th century Europe, right in the midst of uh, the Danish trying to invade England, which is also known as kind of the Viking era. Now this is basically this epic you know, historical drama, action, psychological tale. I would say that if you're a fan of something like Game of Thrones, then you'd definitely be a fan of a story like this. Not only is it insanely cleverly written with all the twists and turns in the plot, it is insanely historically accurate, like from little details like Vikings bathing on a specific day to like the actual royal family who was in power at that time and the actual politics that went on. This guy has done his research. This story will have you up late at night wanting to find out what happens next and where to even begin with the amazing characters. So the main character, Thorfinn, uh, on this volume here, he is basically just an angry little shit. Um, I don't like him, I don't think he's meant to be a likeable character at the start. All the kind of supporting characters, uh, we meet a member of the royal family, who's one of my favourite characters, Thorfinn's sister, for example, as well. Each character is just so unique and so interesting in their own way. They have their own little story going on. Already it is, it's like moved me so much. You go from these like epic action scenes to these like heartbreaking moments. I was reading it and I was almost crying. It was just so emotional and um, just the way that he builds atmosphere and it was just, it's just such a beautiful story. It's so clever. There's so many cool twists and turns. Um, I really cannot emphasize enough how amazing this is. So either if it's the anime or the manga and I do just implore you to check it out if you're at all curious. But now let's dive in to see what the best way to kind of consume this story is. Um, this is all just my opinion as well. Let's talk about the opening. So the anime comes in with this you know, short little battle sequence and then we get straight into the kind of backstory of the main character. It kind of sets the scene, sets the context, sets the world up really nicely. And then in the manga, actually the first like almost half of that book is completely new material, but you're really just chucked in the deep end with these books um, into this fight scene that you don't have a clue who the characters are, which I didn't really like that much. I wasn't really invested in the battle because I didn't know the characters. So I think the anime has to take this point for having the best kind of opening episode. And now moving on to when I reached the, the material in the manga that had already been covered in the first three episodes of the anime. And actually my initial thoughts reading it was, this is missing something. You know, we're missing this 
vibrant colour because the animation is just absolutely stunning. Kind of sky landscapes and the sea. The sea looks like it's realistic. It looks like it's a movie I'm watching. But then going straight into the manga, I did feel like it was kind of missing a little bit of kind of vibrancy and life to it. Uh, another kind of pro to the anime was the music um, and I'm not just talking about that like amazing opening that is like the most hype opening for any anime ever but even just like the background music you know just in kind of like light-hearted moments um, there's always like a sort of fiddle in the background or something um, and I thought that worked really well with this story and of course you just you just can't get that in manga I mean I probably was listening to the opening theme at some point when I was reading it but it's just it's just not the same so I was a bit worried how this manga cat was going to pull off these um, you know suspenseful moments without having you know sound to help with it okay so overall the anime was a pretty good adaptation of what I read it followed it pretty well I was very you know honest to it um, however I already started noticing that I was missing some things out you know maybe a little jokes or just tiny little details that just kind of didn't make the cut into the anime and I already felt annoyed at that because I felt like you know the fact that um, Makoto Yukimura and his team had spent you know hours working on these panels for the anime to just, you know, cut it out. It just, obviously they had to, to kind of yeah, keep it to the, whatever time limits they wanted. But I just felt like it was, it was, you know, a crime that they couldn't do that. This is like a beautiful book. You know, I, I enjoyed each and every little piece that they included in the manga. And now let's talk about um, building atmosphere in the manga because uh, the scene I'm talking about I think is in the third uh, episode. I'm not going to uh, spoil anything for anyone, but it's basically a very kind of suspenseful moment and there's, you've got the drums of the Vikings uh, while they're rowing their boats and stuff and it really was done very well in the anime but somehow um, this manga cat with a pen and paper could create this same like, insane foreboding, dark, suspenseful atmosphere just with a pen and paper. Like, I was absolutely amazed by this guy's talent. The, the way that he did it, there was, you know, shading and uh, the placement of panels was very important as well. Thinking ahead on where the page would be turning. So, you know, you'd be going along and something epic would be happening and then you'd turn the page and then there would be like a spam moment. Um, it worked so well. It was it was insane. I felt so immersed in it, even more so than the you know fantastic anime, which had the, all the sound effects. Another thing I really like about the manga is um, you know this story is actually quite uh, geographically centered, so it's all about um, kind of positions in, in, in the map. And so the manga actually includes these maps. Uh, and so if you're kind of like easily confused, like I am, you want to make sure you're understanding uh, everyone's position and st stuff. You want to get really immersed into the story. Um, so I could like flip back and look at the maps and stuff and make sure I know exactly what's going on. Now let's talk about the fight scenes. So. Um, I'm the sort of person who would maybe get a bit bored of like a big kind of battle sequence in Game of Thrones, for example. But the little battles that we saw in the anime were already pretty cool. They were pretty, uh, you know, unique. But then I saw the manga of it, and it is insane how this guy has such well choreographed fight scenes. You know exactly what's happening. You can follow it really easily. One of the things I love the most is. You can have these fights with like you know tons of ships and you know thousands of bows and arrows and spears and knives, and then it can go on to another sort of battle. So it's like just two particular characters and they're battling inside each other's minds. It gets very psychological. But yeah, there can be chapters where there's like barely any action for a while, but there's still like this intense epic plan happening in someone's mind. I, I found it really really clever and really good. So that's it in terms of like the, the contents of you know the plot and the story. But let's actually go into looking at these beautiful volumes. So from a like collector's point of view, I would always say grab the manga as well because these are some of the like the nicest editions I've ever seen. You know the the spines are all multicolored as well. They really do just look amazing on the shelf. And you know another pro to the manga is you could go into a shop tomorrow and pick up every single volume. Stay up all night if you want and find out everything that happens, read the whole story. Whereas obviously with the anime you're having to wait each week for a new 20 minute episode. So teeny tiny thing for anime, I guess. If you're on a budget, these books are going to set you back. I think they're up to like £20 retail price now. Forbidden Planet, you get three for two. So that's quite a good shout. That's where I got them. And so obviously if you were to compare that to the anime, which you would just need a few months of Amazon Prime for, it's cheaper to consume it via the anime, so there's another pro for that. But actually, on this occasion, I would highly, highly recommend the manga. The art is just absolutely stunning. It actually has nothing on the animation, which again is good, 
But see the detail of, I think it's like a team of like three or four of them. It is absolutely insane the art that they have. And they really deserve more recognition. You know, Yuki Miura is just, if not more talented than uh, George R. R. Martin, for example, who's like a household name. I guess what I would say is just stop being a stingy bastard and just go and support the industry on this one. You will not regret it. Yep. That is all. I'm team manga, of course, because I'm Highland manga, not Highland anime. <laughs> Shut up. But yeah, I'll chuck up like a, like a little summary, pros and cons of both, so you can decide for yourself which one you would prefer. Um, but that is it for me, so uh, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>